the Mueller probe on the Russia part is over and uh, there was no threat, it turns out, that the president was going to fire him. Um, he made it to the end. Joining us now, Alan Dershowitz, noted attorney, author as well. Uh, Alan, your thoughts uh, as we get to the end of this investigation? Well, I don't think anybody should come to final conclusions even after they read the whole report. We have to wait to see what the response is from not only the White House, but from President Trump's legal team. Remember, this is an adversarial report. It's one-sided. It's only evidence that's inculpatory. Special counsel who are prosecutors don't look at all the evidence. They don't invite witnesses who are favorable to the president or evidence that's favorable to the president. So my preference would have been not even to release the report until uh, the Trump team had an opportunity to file a 10 or 15 page response and then release them simultaneously. But the pressure from the media and from Congress is such that I think the report will be released first. But I urge Americans, Democrats or Republicans, to withhold final judgment until they hear the other side of the story. That's what our adversary system is all about. Listen to both sides before you any come to any conclusions. Remember, this is one-sided. No matter how fair the investigation was, and it seems like it might have been a very fair investigation, no leaks. It is a prosecutorial document presenting only one side. We have to wait to see what the Trump defense team comes up with in terms of documents, evidence, witnesses. Remember, too, that the witnesses against President Trump or against the administration have not been subject to cross-examination. That's why we have trials. This is more like an indictment than like a conclusion based on hearing all the evidence. Um, just seeing that uh, senior Department of Justice officials, Alan, say uh, the Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein called Special Counsel Mueller around 4.30 to thank him for his work. We're told the White House was aware that the report had landed at 4.45 in Congress soon thereafter. Um, when you hear a senior Department of Justice official tell reporters that this report does not recommend any more indictments, what do you take from that? Well, I take from it that we may still see indictments coming out of the Southern District of New York or Washington or Virginia. We may see actually in this report a roadmap. Uh, for other and further investigations by U.S. attorneys' offices, by Congress. What we see is there are no further indictments, unless there are sealed ones, uh, from the special counsel himself. I think that's very significant, but that doesn't mean that uh, the president's problems are over. But I do think that if the report does conclude, as the president has said, that there's no collusion and there's no obstruction of justice, it will really take the wind out of the attack on the president himself, though many of his colleagues are still now facing indictment, sentencing, imprisonment. So I think we'll see some more in continuation of investigations, particularly by Congress. But even that may come to an end because there will be court cases challenging the authority of Congress to conduct investigation after investigation if it doesn't relate to any legislative purpose. What about this argument about process crimes, understanding that they are crimes and that they uh, and the indictments we've seen and the people who have been brought forward, Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, we haven't seen the end of the Michael Flynn uh, situation, others, uh, that they were not hiding crimes. In other words, they lied to investigators, but from what we understand, there were not crimes behind it. What, what about that to pe for people to digest? Well, what I've seen, and again, I haven't read the report, is that the only indictments that have come out are either Category 1, crimes that allegedly occurred before this administration came to office, Manafort, crimes that related to things unrelated to the administration, taxi medallions, Cohen, one indictment involving Russia, but they'll never get those people to trial, so that's really a show indictment in some ways. And then finally, the process crimes. Every investigation produces process crimes because people lie, they obstruct witnesses, they do all of the things. These are crimes that are generated, not caused, but generated by the investigation itself. They're serious crimes, but you don't appoint a special counsel in order to prosecute process crimes. You appoint a special counsel to, a, to prosecute or investigate substantive crimes relating to collusion. And on that, unless we see something dramatic in this report, this uh, special counsel has not come up with very much.
and explain to people the thought process about obstruction of justice at the executive level and how the Attorney General Barr has written about this before. Well, he's right. Barr is right, and he, I think, borrowed heavily from what I have said and written uh, uh, over the years. That is, you can't have obstruction of justice when the president simply exercises his constitutional authority to fire, which he did of Comey, or even to pardon. What you need is Nixon-type crimes to have obstruction of justice. Nixon paid hush money to federal witnesses. He told his subordinates to lie to the FBI. He may have erased the tape. And those are the obstructions of justice that are charged. Uh, President Nixon could not properly be charged with obstruction for firing Attorney General Elliot Richardson. So I think that Barr has absolutely cut the, uh, the issue in the right place, indicating where obstruction could occur. No president's above the law, but the law is what guarantees that a president can't be convicted for firing or pardoning or conducting any other constitutionally protected act. Just like George Bush wasn't prosecuted for pardoning Casper Weinberger and five other people, which ended the investigation of Iran-Contra and infuriated the special prosecutor in that case, but no indictments ensued because the president cannot be charged with obstruction for simply carrying out his constitutional authority. Alan Dershowitz, we appreciate your time. Thank you. It's 6 o'clock in the East. This is usually the time when you would see special report. We are in special coverage now that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, has turned in his report uh, to the Department of Justice, specifically to Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, who then got it to the attorney general, uh, William Barr. The White House was made aware of that at 445 Eastern time this afternoon, and soon thereafter, Capitol Hill was notified, the heads of the Senate and House Judiciary Committees. They were not shown the report. The White House was not briefed on the report. They were just told that Barr has it. Now, it is a decision for for the Attorney General how much and what to release them, not only to Capitol Hill, but to the American public. We've heard from the President's lawyers. We've heard that they are happy that this has come to an end. It is the official end of the Russia investigation for Special Counsel Mueller. He's still the Special Counsel. But as we've been pointing out, there are other investigations still ongoing, and Democrats are, have launched a host of investigations that likely the President is going to say should stop. We don't have the meat of what's in this report as of this hour. John Roberts is, joins us now from the North Lawn. We've been digesting as much as we can. John, uh, what's the feeling there at the White House? Uh, well, the, I think the feeling right now is, is that this is finally over. I mean, day after day after day, there's been speculation about when will this report drop? What might be in this report? Uh, I was speaking with Rudy Giuliani on the telephone just a second ago. He told me that they learned yesterday that uh, Robert Mueller was not recommending any further indictments, which for them was seen as good news. Uh, let me just uh, share with you, and I know you did this just before the top of the hour, but since we've crossed the top of the hour, we may have some new viewers joining us. Here's what Giuliani told me a couple of minutes ago about all of this. He said this marks the end of the Russia investigation. We await a disclosure of the facts because we don't have anything in terms of facts just yet. Giuliani also told me that should we start to hear from Barr, as he has suggested, that he may be able to tell Congress some of what Robert Mueller reported, uh, that Giuliani would likely go on some of the Sunday morning shows and talk about that. Uh, Giuliani going on to tell me, quote, we are confident that there is no finding of collusion by the president. And this underscores what the president has been saying from the beginning, that he did nothing wrong. And the president made that point again this morning as he was leaving the White House to get on the helicopter bound for Mar-a-Lago. Uh, today uh, that there is no collusion. Now the president has been calling this a witch hunt because he feels that he has been unfairly affronted uh, by this whole thing and when you look at the genesis of the FISA warrants that led to the Russia investigation the president believes that this was all predicated on false information that was put together for political purposes and not for investigative uh, purposes. We also got a statement from the press secretary, Sarah Sanders, that said, quote, the next steps are up to Attorney General Barr, and we look forward to the process taking its course. The White House has not received or been briefed on the special counsel's report. It is possible, Brett, that sometime over the next few days, the White House may ask to see the report if it contains material that might be subject to executive privilege. We don't know anything about the contents of the report yet, so we do not know whether or not it will be coming here first before it goes to Congress or to public release. Brett?